Hi guys, it's Jade here from Nested Knowledge and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to apply tags in the tagging module. So once you've finished creating the bulk of your tag hierarchy, that is when you would move on to the tagging module. If you haven't created your hierarchy, pop over to my other video. Once you've done that, come back and we can apply those tags together. So once you've finished with the hierarchy, you would navigate over to the tagging module on the left hand side. And this is what you'll be faced with. You'll recognize some of the same components as within the previous screening module. Up here, you know, we have the abstract, full text, supplements, related reports to reference whenever you need to. But the main difference is when you're on the tagging page, when you land on this page, you will automatically be shown the full text for data extraction. We similarly, we have the progress bar showing us, you know, the number of studies that are in the tagging queue and which one that we are currently on right now. So we're on number one of 10. Navigation bar is the same. But the main difference is we now see a tab with all of the questions that we configured. These are all the que questions that we configured in the hierarchy since our nest is in form based tagging mode. Um, but you will see questions in this this form in the order of a form. By default, you will notice that they are grouped by the root tag that we configured previously. So this is to help sort of group those questions. When you do have quite a large hierarchy, it can be helpful to be able to group those questions um, and, or, and answer them in, in multiple forms rather than one long single form. If you'd prefer to answer them in one long single form, absolutely fine. All you'll do, head to settings, scroll down to tagging and select single form under choose form group mode. But the, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to keep it default, leave it at multiple forms. So as you're going through each question and uh, selecting a tag as an answer in the select question types or simply adding in text for the single apply question types, you will be applying a tag. And so when you are answering a question, you're applying a tag. So what, is, what does this mean? Applying a tag essentially connects that uh, concept to the study. It relates that concept to the study. So when you're looking at your exports in synthesis or you know an exported spreadsheet, whenever you filter to a certain tag, you'll be able to see that this study is associated with that tag. So in this particular case, we can already see that this study is a randomized controlled trial. If we were to apply that tag, later on when we filter to that tag, we will see this study directly in line with this tag to be able to review and, and collect more evidence on, let's say. In a spreadsheet, you might have a randomized controlled trial column that you've exported and Underneath that, you will see this study as um, indicated that it is a randomized control trial. So in that sense, when you apply a tag is then associated with that study for um, presentation and display um, in future and in your exports. So when you apply a tag, you can add three different types of annotation to that tag. What you can do is by default, we have a PDF highlighter. And that's this little icon just here. What that does is when you select text, it automatically pastes it within the text box. And when you apply that tag, not only does it auto scroll you to the next question, but what I want to note is when you come back to this tag and you click on it, it auto scrolls you to the place within the PDF that that was um, selected, which is great for um, when you're coming back and um, checking for quality and you just want to um, see where exactly within the PDF that was answered. So that's one way of doing it. This is um, applicable to all question types. So similarly, you can do it in this um, question um, with, the same, with the same annotation. However, if you decide, you know, this question isn't relevant, you can click not relevant. And what that does when you select not relevant is that simply does not apply the tag. So it's not a case of saying that this doesn't exist in the study. It just doesn't apply that tag. 
And so once you've finished with the questions in this form, we can move on to the next one. We've got patient characteristics. So let's say uh, for mean age, we know we have a table configured for this one. So this might be helpful to use an area selection. So if we scroll down, find a table, what we can do is select this table and click apply. So while it doesn't auto populate within you know, the table that you've configured here, what it does do is allow you to, again, when you click it, auto scroll back to that spot within the PDF for easy data extraction um, and data checking in that way. So you can apply that tag, oops, and then we would move on to the next tag. And for reference, um, you might notice there are some um, icons next to these different forms that we have. So a blue filled in icon just means that the questions within that section are complete. A hollow icon means it's partially complete and no icon means that this section is yet to be completed. So the interventions and comparators section we haven't completed yet. So it's just a little key to help help um, make that um, make it make it a little bit more sense. Similarly, um, when you are selecting different um, child tags, different answers, you can create tags on the fly. So say, let's say in this case, we have a new intervention that isn't listed here. We don't want to go back into the hierarchy because we have it all on this page. We have the context, so we'll add it in just here. So for example, we know we have, um, I can't pronounce it, but I know that this drug is, it exists in this particular study. So let's say we want to just add a tag on the fly for this particular intervention. What we can do, add that, add that in, select it, this modal pops up. We can add a description. We know that it's parent tag is interventions because that's the question that we're answering. So we hit create. And then again, we can select, let's use a PDF highlighter this time. We can select that, apply that tag. And so we've created a tag on the fly and applied it. Lastly, the um, manual selector is your, you know, bog standard PDF highlighter. When you highlight something, nothing happens until you apply an action to it. So you can see this doesn't auto populate in here, but you know you can use um, the manual uh, copy function, keyboard functions, whatnot um, here as well. Okay, so the, that is the bulk of how to answer questions in the in these multiple forms. And um, I, I the next thing I want to go through is the rest of the tabs down here. So you might have noticed we have tag recommendations and we have two types. We have standard tag recommendations and smart tag recommendations. Standard tag recommendations searches the PDF with the um, tag title. So it's a very bog standard search and it also searches for the um, child tags beneath it as well. So if I click on this, it does a PDF search, keyword search of serious adverse events. Sometimes that can be helpful, but when there are lots of instances within the PDF, it can be less helpful. For enterprise users of the software, we also offer smart tag recommendations. And what this does is pair with OpenAI's GPT-4 to scan the PDF, scan the questions that you've configured and try and highlight the best possible answer to that question. So in this case, if we click on this recommendation, it says that serious adverse events occurred in 15 patients. So this is the AI that found not just a keyword search, but actually what the results um, for the different groups were as well. So we can apply that tag. And this is just a great way to sort of have that assistance, have that next level sort of AI assisted data extraction. And this isn't just for your one question. Every time you select a question, ideally, if the AI has run well, you would get a suggestion every time um, you are clicking on a different study, like question, sorry. So for patient characteristics, 
um, interventions. We have a fatinib, which yes, we know is another intervention here. So that can be a great assistant um, in doing so. It, it won't automatically apply. It does have to be you, the user that applies that recommendation. But again, it can be a great start to do that here. Alongside tag recommendations, the other tabs that we have down here um, is the ta another tagging module. So in effect, I know I mentioned in a previous video that you could have form-based tagging or standard tagging mode, but within form-based tagging, you also have a standard tagging function as well. So if you don't know, this is what standard tagging looks like. In effect, it is a dropdown of all the tags that are present within your hierarchy. So if you just want to quickly apply a tag and not have to go in and find the question, you can do so here with the same functionality. Or you can review the tags that were already applied um, in this list format again instead of the question format. So if we wanted to see the table for mean age, again, it would auto scroll us back. We can see it here. We can update the tag, that sort of thing. Comments are also available here as they are in the other modules and as is history. So you can see here all of the individual actions that were performed by me, or in this case, the robot, for the smart tag recommendations. Um, you can view that within history. The last thing I would like to note is that tagging functionality, while it is present within the tagging module in this you know, queue format where you go through study one by one, you can also do this within Study Inspector as well. So if we head over to Study Inspector, I'll just very briefly show you um, if we click on a study, we can go over to Tag and it will show you the exact same format um, as is in the tagging module. And so this is great if you just have a batch of studies or particular studies that you want to look at first rather than in the queue form that we have in the module, you can do that here as well. This is also a great way to come in, back in and edit these tags, delete tags, apply new ones, that sort of thing. Okay, so that is the bulk of tagging. And again, once you have finished your tags, you've answered all of the questions, you would hit complete as you would in the previous screening module. And then that would just take you to the next study Blank questions, all to be answered again. Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.